Hey everybody, NFI Hammer here. In this Battle of Warhammer 10th Edition with the June Data Slate update, we're going head to head with Necron versus Aldaris in the closest and most interesting game yet. Virago is a humid and gloomy world dedicated almost entirely to the cultivation of fungal blooms. Located on the outer edge of the Nephilim anomaly, the planet is shrouded in the eerie effects of the pariah nexus, causing a stellifying miasma that weighs heavily on all living creatures. Despite its seemingly unremarkable nature, Virago holds strategic importance due to its rich veins of Noclith, also known as Blackstone, a rare and powerful material to both Necron and Aldari forces. The Necron Hypercrypt Legion, led by NFI Hammer and pledged to Sharak, the Silent King, has been dispatched to Virago under the command of a Technomancer. Their mission is to seize the planet and oversee the construction of a Blackstone Pylon, an essential component of the Necron's nodal matrix. This matrix aims to extend the influence of the prior Nexus, solidifying Necron control over the region and debilitating their enemies further. The Aldari, particularly those from Craftworld Ulthwi, have long been wary of the Necron resurgent, the Farseers, including the esteemed Eldrad Ulthran, have foreseen the dangers posed by the Silent King's plans. They divine that Virago was a critical point in the Necron strategy, and that failure to thwart their efforts here could lead to catastrophic consequences for the galaxy. The battle for Virago has now escalated into a full-scale war, with both sides calling in 1,000 points of reinforcements. The Necron Hypercrypt Legion is determined to complete the pylon and secure the planet, while the Aldari Strands of Fate Force fights desperately to prevent the Necron Ascendancy. Each clash will be a test of wits and strength, with the fate of Virago hanging in the balance. Necron uh, army list today. I've got 10 Necron Immortals. Five of these are newly, my most recent painted models. Um, they've got the Tesla Bark Blaster on them there. And joining them today is the Plasmancer, who makes them score critical hits on five. And they also have a Royal Warden um, that has an attachment to reroll hits of one. So Lots of re-rolls and lots of crits, hopefully, with that. I'm quite excited to try this unit out. Um, I brought some Tomb Blades along. I've uh, put the Tesla weapon on them so they have Assault, because what they do is they advance, move, shoot, and then they can move another six inches, so lots of movement there. My Triarch Stalker with a Heat Ray. Um, he's pretty good on Overwatch because you don't have to roll uh, sixes to hit, so that's pretty cool. Um, he's just got his like DJ dashboard set there. Uh, I've got the race and the Technomancer leading them. So we're playing the June data um, set slate update points, so these guys have gone up in value. So they're quite expensive units, so we'll see how they perform. And then we've got the Scorpec Lord and Scorpec Destroyer. They've also got the attachment that gives them the deep strike ability, so because I'm playing Hyper Crypt Legion, um, lots of teleporting shenanigans. Then these are my second newest painted, but my newest video, which is the Death Marks. Um, so these are like little sniper dudes with precision. They have an ability that um, makes them shoot anyone that comes from reinforcement um, near them, so that's pretty cool, so we'll see how that goes. And finally, I've got my Locust Heavy Destroyer, who did surprisingly well for the 50 points that he is. Um, so yeah, that's the army. Mm -hmm. 
For the Eldari army today, they will be led by Jane Zah. Um, recently had a point drop with the June Fields uh, manual update, points update. Uh, and she'll be with a squad of five uh, Howling Banshees. I'm actually bringing two squads of five Howling Banshees. Um, Jane's are with one and the others by themselves. And it'll be the uh, origin, uh, the G Dub models uh, gripped up with the G Dub Jane's are and the proxy. Howling Banshees is going to be solo. Also running uh, Eldrad, um, Uthran, hoping to try out uh, first time using him. I'm um, hoping to see how Doom goes as a um, ability, as well as Mime War. Um, that'll be cool to see. Uh, we've got a squad, a five man squad of Dire Avengers. Um, see what their shooting's like. Hoping to maybe combo their shooting um, with Doom to see if all their shots can actually do a bit better. Um, we've got a five man squad of Wraith Guard, um, just normal tough units. Um, hoping to run up the middle, take some fire, and shoot back. Got a Wraith Lord um, to go with them as well. Well, to go with them, probably be staying in the backfield, shooting up stuff. Got a three bike squad of wind riders. Um, again, just extra um, firepower on enemy units and objectives. And lastly, a falcon, which will actually be carrying um, Jane Zar and her squad of howling banshees. See how that goes. That's the Eldari army today. Deployment. Um, we've just got a fairly regular. Um, deployment there just horizontal or vertical i don't know they always get confused in my head um deployment the primary mission is also a very standard one of take and hold so that it's just 5 vp per objective marker um and then obviously the fifth battle round the player who goes second has the opportunity to score at the end of their turn and the more interesting one of the three for us today is the mission rule of supply lines. So as long as you control your own deployment zone marker, um, you have a 33% chance. No, more? 50%. Yeah. I'm good at maths. Um, maybe that's why I struggle so much. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, a chance of getting an extra CP. So that'll uh, open up some extra shenanigans. So yeah, it should be interesting to see how it goes. deployment um, I've got the death marks that come with deep strike and my score pack lords that have the deep strike due to the enhancement are in my reserves and then for 190 points I've got here in strategic reserves um, which is my triarch and my tomb blade so that just leaves my race here just chilling on the objective and I've got my 12 unit, a uh, 12 model unit of immortals just hiding in this place here, and a heavy um, whatever is just chilling here as well. And that's basically it. End of Eldari deployment. I put my wraith guard middle um, in these ruins here near the middle of the board. I'm uh, hoping to put pressure in the middle. Use my toughest units there. Behind them, got the Wraith Lord. He can sit at the back, maybe on home objective. We've got the uh, Wind Riders to the right side of the board, hiding behind some ruins. I was originally thinking the right side of the board might be better for me, but based on the where the Immortals are, I switched over to reinforce my final guy, the Falcon, carrying the Howling Banshees on the left corner. Uh, maybe instead to push up the left flank of the board.
Eldari won the roll off to go first. Um, well, I'd probably prefer to go second. But so for turn one, Eldari, uh, I moved my wind riders from the right flank, um, moving them around to left to regroup with the army. I and also in my haste forgot to assault move them, so just regular moved them. Whoops. Uh, the Wraith Lord moved him from behind the ruins here onto the home objective, um, so he can sit there. There's nothing in sight of him that he can shoot at, so he's just chilling. The Wraith Guard moved out of the ruins, um, tried to assault move them closer to center objective, but got a two on the, um, on the roll, so only eight inch move, put them up here, somewhat protected and the um, falcon around here was uh, I was hoping to um, get him on uh, on point get him on the side objective here um, to hold that which I, he did do but that did require me to advance move him I rolled a one on the advance so I had to command point reroll um, and I used a fate dice of four to make sure he landed on the objective here to help score next round the primary um, no shooting, no assault. That is the end of Eldari Turn 1. The shortest turn of Warhammer ever, or definitely a personal best for me. Um, I, I pretty much did nothing. We got the one CP for the turn. Uh, with the secondary mission, um, I need to roll a four, and I rolled a one. Just disappointing and a disappointed just left my race on the uh, objective marker and my base and pretty much my entire army is in reserves now so just chilling um, and that's the end of Necron turn one End of Eldari turn uh, two. Uh, saw um, 10 points being scored on primary from the Falcon and the Wraith Lord. Um, also, in turn one, the secondaries that were drawn were the behind enemy lines and overwhelming force. So, at the end of my turn, I binned behind enemy lines to gain a command point. Um, and the new one I drew in turn two was Defend Stronghold. Um, so for moving units, uh, I brought the Wraith Guard uh, from around the corner up. I um, advanced, um, moved them forward. They actually failed to make the distance with the advance rolls, so I command point re-rolled, considered using fake dice, but went for it and got a five. So uh, just on naturally rolling, so I got them onto the objective. I advanced, moved the wind riders around from um, the side of board, bringing them um, back with the rest of the army. Um, slight movement on the Wraith Lord to um, get them further in zone, and stood still with the Falcon. In the shooting phase, uh, the Falcon um, had a good round of shooting, taking out two of three wraiths, um, and also shot backwards at some Scorpec destroyers that had deep striked, um, oh, rapid ingress, deep striked uh, in the back of my field. Um, the Shuriken cannon from the Falcon didn't kill any, um, but the um, but did wound um, one. And then the wind riders um, were able to, they shot and didn't um, kill any, but the Wraith Lord was able to um, kill the wounded um, Scorpec Destroyer. And at the end of the turn, um, if I um, still am holding the stronghold, 
I will score that um, secondary objective, but not score overwhelming force. And that's the end of Eldari turn two. Necron turn two, it ended up taking uh, about 50 minutes <laughs> to get through this one turn. Um, so I did a um, reanimation protocol on these guys, plus the Technomancer's wounds, so they came back up too. I ended up destroying, uh, deploying my Triarch Stalker and Tomb Blades here, and um, shot at the, whatever this is called, the Falcon. And actually the Tomb Blades did a huge amount of damage. I think they did something like, you know, um, six wounds or something, which was very unexpected. Um, but with the combined firepower of the Scorpec Lord, the Triax Stalker, and then finally charging in, um, ended up killing the Falcon. However, um, the Falcon did Deadly Demise and managed to roll a six, which was extremely lucky, and then rolled two more sixes for damage. So it ended up doing three damage to the Scorpec Destroyers and the Tomb Blades, killing one of each. And because they're mortal wounds, they carry over. The I deployed my 10 Immortals and Plasmancer and Royal Warden, and I ended up doing 50 dice rolls against um, the unit and I only did one damage so uh, yeah that was really unlucky um, for that so it's basically unkillable even with my strongest unit on the board shooting at point-blank range and then when we did uh, I charged in for the fight phase um, and then I lost six more units uh, so losing a lot of damage uh, a lot of units there and then on this side of the board, I just destroyed my sniper units here um, and my hex mark heavy destroyer here. So all in all, I think I probably lost as much as I um, killed. So pretty self-destructive round. of Eldari turn three um, had um, we still have the same overwhelming force and defend stronghold um, objectives from last turn because didn't score them um, I thought I was going to score the stronghold at the end of the enemy turn but um, because the immortals came in they took it away from me so still holding on to those secondaries for primaries I got five points for the middle primary, but didn't get either of the others. I was not holding, uh, so just five points on primary. Uh, for movement, I moved the Wraith Guard over the objective with the intention of shooting at the death marks, and then totally forgot. So effective use of that. I moved the Wind Riders onto the perch there, um, so they actually contributed some shooting power to the... Um, uh, the destroyers um, and also brought from reserve Eldrad and the Dire Avengers on the corner here um, so Eldrad could doom um, the destroyers um, the uh, shooting from Eldrad mine war um, failed um, to snipe the leader and the Dire Avengers shot and I think took some wounds uh, uh, off uh, the destroyers, 
The Howling Banshees also shot at the destroyers, so a lot of firepower going to the destroyers. But there were the Scorpac Lord was standing there at the end of shooting phase, and the charge from Jane Zar and her Howling Banshees finished him off. And at my home base, the uh, Howling Banshees charged in to attack the Immortals, not only killing maybe two, three, I think three. three, yeah, and then the um, Royal, Warden. Royal Warden was, well, the Immortals <coughs> attacked back and um, targeting the Wraith Lord but not doing any damage, and then the Wraith Lord finally swung a sword to kill all bar the Royal Warden, who at the end of my turn teleported away, ran home with his tail between his legs, and um, so I scored the secondary of overwhelming force um, with the Scorpic destroyers being destroyed. The defend stronghold, I'm currently got it, um, but that's scored at the end of um, Necron turn, so we'll see how that goes. That's the end of Eldari turn two. This one was a little bit more successful. Um, I used my Hypercrypt um, deployment stratagem to move this guy within three inches so I could just get the very edge of the deployment zone. Um, and then I deployed my Plasmants in nine inches away, but six inches on the edge of the battlefield. And they actually managed to take out um, the big dude and the little dudes that were guarding here. Um, so that was actually uh, these Howling Banshees and the Wraith Lord. Um, they also got some help from my uh, Locust Heavy Destroyer. He actually is quite good in shooting. I've had some success. Um, then my Snipers up here, they didn't go for these unit because that can shoot back. So they actually ended up killing two bikes. And then over here, um, I forgot to move my um, Tomb Blades. So they were just chilling here, but I ended up shooting the leader and doing some damage, and then they moved six inches after shooting, so I've just kind of hidden them a little bit. And here, I actually managed to do some shots up on here and take one wound away um, with the tech mancer it has a line of sight, I didn't realize, but I forgot to use the tech mancer's ability to regen. Um, so actually, I should have rolled another D3, but I forgot. And that's the end of the turn, so um, 28 points to 30 is a little bit closer now, um, so we'll see how we go. End of Eldari turn four. We um, carried the secondary ejector from last turn of Defend Stronghold, but decided to do new orders for one CP, um, which left us with securing no man's land and capture enemy outpost. And so for primaries, we went into the round um, holding two primaries in the middle of the board. Um, so scoring 10 VP for that um, and so for the turn we moved our uh, Wraith Guard slightly over to take a shot at the Triac Stalker taking off two wounds. We um, kind of changed our units around a bit moving uh, getting nice advanced rolls for the Farseer and for the Dire Avengers to move them from the side of the board onto objective which we also added the um, Wind Rider to the mix as well. Um, who shot at the um, the wraith? Um, one wound going, th one uh, shot going through to take off two wounds to kill one wraith, and the howling banshees um, started running off the objective towards the track stalker. 
and which meant that for secondaries we scored um, secure no man's land uh, for 5 VP and didn't score capture enemy outpost and that's the end of Eldari turn 4. Alright, end of Necron turn 4, I did the de deploy teleport homer by moving my tomb blades um, that I had hypercrypt legion off the battlefield. I put them back on at the enemy deployment zone and did that homer to get the 5 VP. The no prisoners, I basically focused fire the wraith guard units um, from my technomancer here, shot across. Uh, my death marks up here, did plunging fire, which I may have forgot to apply, um, onto here. The Plasmancer did his psychic kind of blast attack and regular shooting, and the Triarch did the torrent, and yeah, I only managed to kill three out of the five. So they're very resilient, so I didn't get to score that no prisoner VP, unfortunately. Um, but I did get 15 primary from starting on the three objectives and I did get that five from the teleporting Homer to get 20 VP that turn. So that is definitely my highest VP score this game so far. End of Eldari turn five, uh, we drew um, Attempting Target and Area Denial as the secondary objectives. And for primaries, we started on two um, objectives in the middle of the board, um, scoring 10 VP there. Uh, for um, the Wraith Guard here, we moved them slightly close to the center of the board um, and took a shot at the um, Necron uh, leader um, that was sitting beside the Triarch Stalker, destroying him. That was a good kill um, because he's done so much damage. Um, we had the uh, Wind Rider um, shoot and finish off um, the. What are the floaty guys called? Um, Tomb Blades. Tomb Blades. <laughs> Along with um, Jane Zar also shooting at them, finish them off. Um, and in moving Jane Zara with the Howling Banshees up the board, um, they took Overwatch from the Triarch Stalker, um, who wiped out the full squad, um, almost from full health to zero health. <laughs> and then, uh, Jane Zara charged into, um, the Triarch Stalker, um, and did zero damage. And Triarch Stalker did zero damage back. Um, nice little stalemate there. And that's the end. And so uh, for secondaries, um, we scored the area denial being in the center of the board uh, and didn't score attempt and target. That's the end of Eldari 10 5. End of Necron turn 5 and end of the game. Um, I had scored this No Prisoners one during my opponent's turn five when I did an Overwatch and killed the Bodyguard. I think that that means that I can draw another one. Um, let me know in the comments or whatever what how that works with scoring secondary in your opponent's turn. But the two I drew were Defend Stronghold, which is just holding your own, and extend battle lines which is holding your own plus one in the middle so they were like probably the best secondaries i could have drawn in that turn um so yeah i moved these uh death marks from over there where they've been most of the game um down to my home objective which then actually freed up my canoptic race that have been just chilling all game probably underutilized so i pushed them into the middle 
Um, we had a bit of a battle. Um, I did two wounds and took no damage. So it was a bit of a stalemate, but my OC is higher. So I managed to get that um, for primary. And then the same with the Triax Stalker in the back. He also did no damage and just kind of chilled, um, but more OC. So that gave me 10 VP for those two and then 10 VP for those two. And then, yeah, I got 8 VP from the secondary. So that gave me a whopping 28 points, which is my highest scoring round, I think, ever. Um, and that brings me to a total of 76 points versus 60. It was a really um, interesting game in terms of at the end of turn two, I felt like I had no chance after losing all my immortals or practically all my immortals um, and hardly wounding the Wraith Guard, Wraith Lord. Um, but yeah, turn three really turned it around. And then I think by having these death marks, I think are like 70 points and the hex mark, the hex or whatever, Locust Heavy Destroyer, it's 50 points. They kind of give you a lot of utility in scoring objectives um, for low point count, which is something I've struggled with um, a lot. And then just having these unkillable um, wraiths were pretty handy as well. Um, but yeah, it was a really interesting, fun game. And thanks for watching.